Today we are taking a look at the Sony SRS XE300. This speaker was released back in July of 2022, so at the time of filming this video, the speaker has been out in the market for just a little under a year, and it currently costs $150, which is actually $50 less than its initial listing price at $200. And Sony does have lots of other speakers in different sizes, like the XG300, which is just a little bit bigger than this one here, and I actually reviewed that speaker on this channel right before this video. Then we have the XE200, which is a little bit smaller than this one and the fairly new XB100, which is Sony's tiniest portable speaker. And then they actually have a couple more bigger portable speakers as well. I know that's a lot of info right off the bat, but I just want you guys to be aware of how many options there are so that you can make the best decision for your situation. Now though, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Sony SRS XE300 to see if it would be a good option for yourself. And taking a look at the build quality here, the first thing you'll probably notice is its sleek modern design. At the very front of the speaker, we have this durable mesh that we see in a lot of other portable speakers, but it also kind of wraps around the top and the bottom of the XE300. You also do not have to look very hard to notice this plastic rubbery texture wrapping all the way around the circumference of the speaker. We even have the same texture on the bottom where the speaker usually sits and the top is a bit different and doesn't have that rubbery feel to it. This grippy plastic material actually allows the speaker to be shockproof which means it can withstand small drops on hard surfaces and it can withstand water and sand as well. It is IP67 certified, which means it can be submerged in up to a meter of water for 30 minutes, which I think is an absolute must for an everyday portable speaker. And I would say the overall design and build is pretty much perfect except for two different things. I do wish there was some kind of handle just so you could carry this thing around a little bit easier and it does get a little bit tiring after holding this in one hand for a while. And second, it would have been really nice if Sony could have created the speaker to have audio coming out from two different areas instead of just this little front area right here. This isn't a big deal and wanting multi-directional audio is asking for a lot, but it would have been a nice feature to have. On the side of the speaker, we have all of our typical buttons like the power button at the very top. We have this little charging indicator light right underneath that. We've got the Bluetooth button, the pause and play button, our usual volume controls, the battery button that also activates stamina mode, and then the mute button as well. If you do press the pause or play button twice, it will go to the next song, and if you press it three times, it will actually go back to the previous song. And if you're getting a call on your device, you can actually just tap this button once, and it will allow you to talk directly on the phone through the speaker. And this is where this mute button comes into play, because if for whatever reason you're on a call and you wanna meet yourself, you can just press this button once, and then if you wanna unmute yourself, you just press it again. Also, there is this battery button where if you press it, it'll tell you exactly how much battery life you have left, just like this. Battery, about 80%. On the back, behind this water-resistant flap, we do have a USB-C port to charge up the speaker. And just in case you guys are wondering, we do not have an aux input on the speaker. I know most of you probably won't care about that, but I just wanted to mention it just in case. And this speaker does have Bluetooth 5.2, so you will get a decent amount of range before the Bluetooth cuts off from your device. And I would say that the majority of portable speakers these days that are more new will have the same Bluetooth connection. It does support the default AAC and SBC codecs and Sony's high-res LDAC for those of you possibly wondering. Moving on, I do want to talk about something really important, which is the battery life of the SRS XE300. Sony claims up to 24 hours of listening time, which is deceiving because you can only get that with the stamina button turned on and you have to be listening at a consistent rate of below 60% volume. And trust me, you will probably not want to be listening to the speaker with the stamina button on because it makes the audio sound extremely lacking. So with the stamina mode turned off and listening at a consistent 100% volume, you will only get about five hours of playtime with the speaker. That is obviously much shorter than Sony claims, but realistically here, you probably won't have the volume at 100% all of the time. So you should see anywhere from nine to 14 hours, depending on the volume that the speaker is at with the stamina button turned off. And once it does come time to charge up the speaker, you can expect it to take around five hours to get fully juiced up. If you are short on time, this does have a quick charge feature where 10 minutes of charging will give you an additional 70 minutes of playtime, which is very, very nice. And moving on, let's talk about the most important thing in this video, which is the sound quality. This speaker has two different 2.8 inch woofers behind this durable mesh. And this speaker uses a different diffuser that is actually line shaped 
instead of dual teardrop shaped dynamic drivers like a lot of other speakers. I have to say, I do like the way this speaker sounds for $150. It's not spectacular, but it is good and any average person that just wants to have a portable speaker for everyday use will really enjoy its sound. I will say that with some different genres and at louder volumes, the speaker does struggle with some of those higher frequencies and vocals, but I kind of find myself talking about the same exact thing in just about every single portable speaker video that I create because every single one has the same issue that's around this size. It's not a big deal, but it would be nice if there was just a tiny bit more clarity with the higher pitch sounds. Of course, I have an audio test for you guys as well, so I will go ahead and play that for you.
Now the XE300 can get pretty loud as well, but it's not going to be a speaker that you want to use for large events that's going to fill up audio in every single corner. If you do want something that is slightly louder and larger, you can check out the XG300, which is $50 more. And there are also two different apps that work with Sony's most recent portable speakers, and that is the Sony Music app and the Feastables app. Sony Music will allow you to create a custom EQ to slightly change the audio based on your personal preference, and you can also edit some of the controls within the app as well. One thing that is really nice about the Sony app is it has the option to pair multiple Sony speakers together so that they can play music at the same time simultaneously. And the second app, which is called Feastables, is completely different and it'll actually allow you to add in some different instruments into your music, but it's not really worth showing you guys because that's just about all you can do with it. So after everything we've talked about, would the Sony SRS XE300 be a good option for yourself? Well, if you want a larger portable speaker that you can still fit in your bag, that is shockproof and IP67 certified, which means it's water and sand resistant, and it sounds pretty good, then you will really enjoy this speaker. The shockproof design makes the speaker crazy durable, more so than its competitors, like the JBL Charge 5, which is also $150. And I personally do enjoy the sound of the JBL Charge 5 just a little bit more, but it isn't quite as durable. Overall, this is a tough decision that you guys are gonna have to make yourself, because if you'd rather have something that is just a little bit more durable, then you can get this speaker, or if you'd rather have slightly better audio quality, then you can get the JBO Charge 5. But if you guys do wanna check out either of these speakers, I will go ahead and put the links for them in the description below this video for the most updated prices. With that being said, if you guys have any thoughts about the Sony SRS XE300, definitely comment down below, because I'd love to hear what you guys think. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.